Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Of course, on the Barn Find 1979 BMW 520. So, in the previous video, we got this thing running and we got it driving. Yes, this thing actually drives now. I've been a bit busy, been doing some things off camera. So I have completely flushed out the coolant system. As you probably know, I basically just had tap water running through there. And the state of the cooling system, the state of the water that was in there was disgusting. Done multiple flushes, came out brown, then a lighter shade of brown, then a even lighter shade of brown, and then eventually just came out clear water. So we completely flushed out the entire system. Need to add some coolant slash antifreeze now because it is getting close to minus temperatures and if I just have water in there chances are that the block will crack. It's also not going to do the block any good anyway because it's cast iron so it'll just rust. So yeah we need to get some coolant in there, we need to get some antifreeze in there. I've had all of the hoses off, made sure everything's clear. I've even taken off the hoses to the heat matrix, blew uh, fresh water through and then yeah a load of nasty water came out the other end. So yeah, cooling system, need to do that first. Um, like I said, we just need to add some fresh coolant. I believe this car takes G11 or this stuff anyway. Yeah, most BMWs take G11. I'm sure you can probably use almost anything, but I'm gonna use G11 coolant, have some concentrated of that. And also have some uh, distilled water as well. Five liters, 10 liters should be enough. I hope. So let's get some coolant in there, fire this up and then uh, bleed the coolant system, make sure there's no air in the system. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the entire five liters of concentrated straight in. I'm gonna aim for a 50-50 mix. So I'm guessing there'll be a little bit of water still in the system, so you know, if it's slightly stronger than 50-50, doesn't really matter to be honest. Just means that it will cool a little bit better. Just means that it will offer a slight better protection, you know, in lower temperatures. Not that we ever get to like minus 20, minus 30 degrees in the UK anyway. Okay, that's now full it's saying. Obviously it's not full. Just needs draining through. I'm gonna have to get the engine fired up just so we can get that cycling through. Or can I just spin the water pump by hand? No, of course I can't because the belt's on. Heaters are on by the way. Going down. I'm just going to let things get up to temp. Let the thermostat open, let the coolant get through the entire system, and then we can start topping this up towards the max level. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Now for those of you who are unaware of HelloFresh, they are a company that delivers fresh, great tasting ingredients direct to your door. Now for those of you who want to check out HelloFresh, there will be a link down in the description box below, along with a discount code where you can save yourself a massive 60% off your first order and a further 20% for the next two months. So with my order then, these are the meals that I decided to go with. So first of all, we have a ultimate Chipotle chicken burrito bowl with pico de gallo, guacamole, sour cream and cheese. This is from their ultimate menu. It takes 30 to 35 minutes to cook. It's mild spice and contains three of your five a day. Of course, comes with all of the ingredients that you need. 
Right here we have the Cajun barbecue chicken rice bowl with spinach, cheese, and crispy onions. I am looking forward to trying this. I absolutely love anything that is barbecue chicken based, and this only takes 15 minutes to cook as well, so it's great if you are in a rush. Again, of course, comes with all of the ingredients that you need. And then finally, we have the 21 day age rump steak and lemon chive butter with cheesy mash and peas. Again, this is relatively quick to make, just 20 to 25 minutes, contains one of your five a day, and of course comes with all of the ingredients that you need. And this is the one that I'm gonna be making today. Now on the rear of the recipe card, it comes with a step-by-step -step guide exactly how to make your meal. It also labels all of the cooking tools, ingredients, nutritional information, and any allergy information as well. Now this should be foolproof, even I should be able to make this meal. And right here we have all of the fresh ingredients laid out in front of us. Now all that's left to do is get cooking. And here is the finished product. This looks so good. Cannot wait to try this. Now, I just want to say a massive thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring the channel. Remember, if you want to check them out, all the details will be down in the description box below. But now let's get back to the video. Okay, so we are now up to temp. Temperature gauge is bang smack in the middle. So the thermostat should have opened. I've also topped the cooling system up to the max mark, which is just there. You can't see in there, it's so dark. But yeah, that's now up to that max mark. Ended up not adding the entire five liters, probably about four and a half liters, and about another one to two liters of the deionized water. I think the entire system holds between seven and eight liters. So yeah, fairly confident. I've got all of the air out of the system. So that should be the cooling system I'm done for now. Now, one thing I've noticed, the HT leads are making contact with the exhaust manifold, so they're just gonna melt. So I definitely need to put the heat shield back on there. Oh, if you're wondering what this is as well, this is the makeshift crankcase breather for now. It was just blown out the side there all over the carb so I've just rerouted that to the ground. I've ordered the genuine BMW pipe that literally goes from there to there. As you can see paintbrush is currently blocking the port on the intake manifold so once that arrives I'll install that. I've also installed a fuel filter just on the fuel inlet hose here. Seems to be coming through pretty clear. I can't even see any dirt or rust in there to be honest so I think the fuel tank must be pretty good yeah really doesn't look too bad does it so I guess what we can do now is start getting the airbox and everything put back together oh also like I said get the exhaust heat shield reinstalled as well but of course everything is looking a bit worse for wear so i think i'm going to give all this a good clean up and then maybe even a lick of paint who knows oh I'll also need to get rid of this thing i don't know if i'm going to have to get a new cover because i don't know how i'm going to block that i mean it looks terrible anyway but Yeah, it's definitely not factory, is it? Yeah, I may have to get a new one of these covers. For the time being, I suppose I can put a bung on there or something. But yeah, then all this can go back together. Even the fan can go back on, all of the, well, this front timing cover I can go back on. But yeah, of course, I want to try and give all this a good clean up first. I made a mistake, just test fitting the air box and everything. Of course, that's how the airbox goes on. But that, that was just plugged with that paintbrush there, that's for this pipe. The crankcase breather hose goes from there to there. 
previous owner must have put a must have put a cork or something in it to block it off. But of course, I'll be removing that and putting that hose back on. Okay, so we're back working on the E12 then. It's been a while, as you can probably tell from the weather. No risk of the block freezing and cracking now. Temperatures are a lot higher than they were when I last recorded on this thing. And we have some pretty big updates. So I said I was going to take away, clean and paint up some of the engine bits. I have done that, so the air cleaner box, that's all been stripped down to bare metal. It was shot blasted by my dad and I've gave it primer and uh, numerous coats of paint. The front timing cover, that's had a good clean up as well. It's of course aluminium. I've taken apart, cleaned and gave a quick coat of paint to the uh, radiator fan as well. The rocker cover, that's been shot blasted and that's came up nicely as well. And also the exhaust manifold heat shields as well. They came up nicely and they've had some high temperature exhaust paint on. Looking nice and fresh. So the plan now then is to get all this back onto the engine. Before I do that though, I do just want to adjust the choke. So there is a screw here now I have no idea what I set this to when I, you know, rebuilt the carb. Um, but going off of the carb that I received, the second one that I received, that was 8.5 turns out. So I'm basically just going to mimic that. And hopefully this thing runs better. I know it tends to run quite rich. And it seems that the, uh, the choke never actually opens fully so yeah hopefully by adjusting that that is going to help that so once we've done that of course then the air cleaner box can go back on and i'll get all of the ht leads back into the respective cylinders okay so i've just checked and this adjustment screw was only one and a half turns out which i have a feeling is not where it should be so i'm just going to do a full 8.5 turns out now that's one two, three, eight, and another half of one, 8.5. Okay, so a few bits and pieces back in now, front timing cover, the radiator fan, the, or the bottom of the air cleaner box, the crankcase breather hose, that's plumbed up to the air cleaner box. I'm not gonna bother putting the filter or the lid back on or any of the other uh, ducting because I just want to fire this up make sure it um, still runs all right and obviously after adjusting the choke see if we notice any difference with that as well um, it's been a good couple of months so I'm guessing the battery will be uh, pretty dead at this point so I'll just have the jumper pack on but yeah let's hope this thing fires straight back into life I don't think that's getting fuel through. May just need to keep cranking some more though. Hopefully it feeds itself through. I'm guessing after sitting for a few months, it's probably the pipes have got, probably gone dry. It's definitely got fuel in, but I'm just gonna put another few liters in, see if that makes any difference. Right, fuel added. You watch it fire straight into life now. I think I'm just going to keep cranking because I know the fuel pump's good. We know it works. I think there's just now a lot of air in the system essentially. So yeah, just going to keep cranking until we see fuel at the fuel filter at least. So I can't see anything there at the moment. So, it runs again, but still it's idling way, way too high. 
and I can see still the choke valve is not closing. I think that's why we're seeing quite a bit of smoke out of the tailpipe. Definitely less than what we've seen previously, but there's definitely still some smoke there. I think it's just running way too rich. But let's switch it off. So then, why are we still idling way too high? Why are we still running rich? Well, I can only imagine it is something to do with the carburetor. It obviously needs adjustment. Now, it's kind of out of my realm of things. I will do some uh, research or try and find a, a manual, you know, when it comes to setting one of these carbs up. It's a Solex 4A1 carburetor for those that care. But yeah, you know, I don't know where to go, you know, at this present time. Um, obviously it runs, but you know, we can't have it just absolutely screaming its nuts off just sitting here in the driveway, can we? So if I had to guess sort of how many RPMs it's idling at, I'd say maybe 2000, something like that, which is obviously high. I'm guessing it should be idling 800, 900 RPM, something like that. So yeah, we do need to get that sorted. And obviously if, if we, if, you know, if we was to drive it like that, it just use way, too much fuel. I think I had like a quarter of a tank and I think just running it for like 10 minutes went through like an eighth of a tank, so half of that quarter. So yeah, it's definitely running rich. We need to sort that out. But I am gonna proceed and continue doing what I plan to do in this video, which is pay some attention to the brakes. So still has the original brake fluid in here. It is below the minimum, but the good thing is that we have some brake fluid. Now, is there a leak? I don't know. Um, I mean, all these uh, steel, steel pipes now, they're all, what, 40, when was this, 79? So they're all 45 years old. And most of them are probably the original. So uh, chances are we probably are gonna come across some leaks, but I'm just gonna, let's say we don't come across any leaks and just go ahead get the car up in the air and try and bleed all four brake calipers and we'll see how that goes. So let's get on with the brakes then. Rear of the car is up in the air. Just have the trolley jack on the differential. Nice chunky piece of metal that looks like it's been at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean for 100 years or so i mean let's be honest if that was recorded from the titanic you would think it's from the titanic wouldn't you right i've got my bluetooth axle stands in place as well so should the trolley jack fail pretty sure those jack stands will probably go straight through the rear subframe there so having a look at the rear brake bleeding situation. There is a bleed nipple there, obviously the same on the other side as well. Good thing, this pipe has been replaced. Bad news, the other side hasn't been replaced and it looks a bit crispy, I'll show you that in a minute. But yeah, I have a feeling that this is just gonna round off. Hopefully it doesn't because then that will save us a hell of a lot of pain and suffering so i'm gonna try and clean it up as best as possible i may even apply a bit of heat to it before we even try and crack it loose and then we will try and crack it loose probably snap it and then we'll start crying shall we apply some heat let's apply some heat And now, let's see if we can tickle it loose. So when it comes to loosening off rusty 
bleed screws, don't even try and bother with a wrench or a spanner, whatever you want to call it. Just go straight in with a deep socket. I'm going to guess it's an 8mm. No, it's much smaller than that. 7. That feels good. This is either going to work or it's not. Surely that wasn't that easy. It's free. This car does keep surprising me. Let's get the power bleeder on the reservoir. So pressure bleeder hooked up, fresh fluid going through. Now I would wait and see if it's holding pressure but this bleeder isn't the best it is actually leaking pressure from the bleeder itself so i've just pumped it up to about 20 psi and uh, we'll crack the bleed screw loose and see if we have fluid coming out of there it'll be a miracle if we have brake fluid coming out of here we do we have brake fluid coming out of here right <laughs> Let's bleed it. Big problem. It began to bleed and then it stopped. So I thought, oh, I'll just remove the bleed screw fully. Maybe it's just blocked. Fluid still wasn't coming out. But it is coming out of one of those brake pipes up there. Massive puddle all over the floor. Yeah, I think that's just rusted through, to be honest. Which brake is that, though? Definitely one of the rears, I think maybe the other side. Ugh. Okay, so I'm just kind of sat here contemplating life at the moment. I'm looking for suggestions what I should do with this car. Do I just do the bare minimum to get it running? I mean, it's kind of running now. Do I do the bare minimum to get it driving on the road and um, hope that it gets us out on at least one journey and home safely or do I you know do everything that we can so basically what I'm asking you should I just repair that one brake line that one steel brake line obviously replace for a copper one or do I just do the whole lot or do I just turn this into a full restoration? Because once you start, you know, when do you stop? I could remove the whole underside, take it all back to the bare metal, rust protect it, primer it, paint it, see what welding work needs doing. And then, you know, you end up 20,000 pounds into a car that costed you 1,500 pounds. Yes, I think I got this for a good price, but it may not be worth it once I'm done with it. Uh, I really don't know. I, I do love this car. I love that we managed to bring it back from the dead, so to speak. It was sat in a barn for 30 years, left to rot. And, you know, we've done a half engine rebuild. We got it up and running. And I would quite like to drive this car. I think it'd be a good laugh. Um, obviously we need to kind of make sure it stops first because that's kind of important isn't it you know you can't have brake fluid leaking all over the floor and not have a way of stopping so yeah i am going to leave this video here obviously we're not going to be able to do what we wanted to do today um so i want to thank all of you for watching like i said leave suggestions down below where you think i should be going with this car bear in mind everything else that i have going on at the moment as well I'm interested to know all your thoughts, but um, yeah, give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I'll see you all in that next one.